What is it they say, Adam? Only mad dogs and Englishmen. It's 30 degrees Celsius. It's what, just short of 10.30 in the morning over here in Jacksonville, Florida. The humidity is up at 91%. And yes, I'm here, shirt, tie, suit, and look at this pool. This is one of the vantage points that spectators and fans will have ahead of today's game. Kickoffs at 1 p.m. local time. These are the lockers of the big men. The offensive line, the men's task with keeping the pressure off quarterback Andy Dalton, enabling him to make plays. And right at the end here, the locker of uh, tackle Andrew Whitworth. Just look at these boots. He has the biggest feet in the entire Bengals team, I'm told, size 17. Let's put my foot against that. You get two of my feet in there. Where I'm stood now is if you're attacking, attacking that far end, you're one yard inside your own half. The 49 yard line is a 60 yard field goal if you're going to kick it. That's the longest field goal we've seen this year. Chandler Cantazaro scoring it for the Arizona Cardinals back in September. The idea is if you're on offense attacking this end zone, you want to get at least all the way down to the 20 yard line. Now this is important for the Cincinnati Bengals because if they're attacking this end. They have a top 10 running offense this year, top 10 passing offense, but the problem is getting it into the end zone. Every day a cattle herd is still driven through these streets. 15 Longhorn cows, each representing a decade from Fort Worth's past. Go Cowboys! Go Cowboys! Go Cowboys! It's been a long time since Dallas fans have been this excited about their team. Dreaming of emulating their heroes at a fan event this weekend. Go Cowboys! Yeah! But among them, fans of another team who are full of confidence. Go Packers! This is the ultimate prize, the Lombardi Trophy. In their time, Dallas have won five of these, but they haven't even been to a Super Bowl in 21 years. While for Green Bay, their fourth and most recent success came right here in this city. Tonight, for one of these teams, the road to Super Bowl 51 will end. For the other, the NFC Championship game awaits. From Beverly Hills and its affluent shopping districts to downtown LA, Venice Beach and its sun-kissed bodies, to Muscle Beach and the powerlifters, these people have waited more than two decades to have an NFL team they can call their own. That wait is now over. The LA Rams are back in town. This is a city which prides itself on making dreams happen. But after a 22 year absence, the question is, can the Rams bring a Lombardi trophy back here as well and deliver the Hollywood ending? I can't believe it either. Here at the Broncos training facility is the reason for everyone's excitement. Victory in Super Bowl 50 gave Denver their third Vince Lombardi trophy. And now every member of that winning team has one of these. It's a Super Bowl ring made up of 212 diamonds. And I can assure you, it feels pretty good. The challenge is to be in front at the final hooter. But on this vessel, the challenge is to save lives. A job that warrants huge respect. In the hills of Cumbria, this might look a peaceful setting, but this week these players have been put to work, moving logs, pulling cars, hiking through the night and loading bags of wool weighing up to 100 kilograms. What an occasion it promises to be this weekend. The round ball swaps for the oval ball. As the Betfred Super League arrives in Barcelona, the new Camp Stadium, and what a mouth-watering match it'll be. Explosive is an understatement. Impressive hitting, and then, of course, two days ago down at Bristol, Johnny Bairstow, magnificent 128, and he was notice noticeably still annoyed when he finally got out as well. But for the man who's masterminded Yorkshire's return to championship success, this is the final game with the county. Jason Gillespie will head home to Australia at the end of this season, but right now, is focused squarely on the job at hand. Well, thank you very much. The party's in full swing. Chris Wilder's in great voice. So too, Billy Sharp. And we've been soaked. <laughs> Sheffield United in the Premier League, Chris. Never get the ball away. <laughs> it's good times here, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad, is it? It's decent day. <laughs> So a break with the routine of Super Bowl week, we've come to downtown Minneapolis to take in the sights and sounds. Behind us, you've got the Mississippi River. Above us, you've got the bold north zip line, 100 feet high, 750 feet long. Who's up for it, chap? Come on, let's do it. Scared, stay scared. Living on the edge. Minus 29, are you kidding me? Oh, Lord! Woo! 
Oh, we made it. <laughs> Are we going to do it again? No. Um, no. The I was only saying it because I thought they were listening. At NASA's Mission Control, the orbiting International Space Station is now marked by a football. And on Sunday, the astronauts inside it will have a live feed of the game. Here at NASA, everything's big, and down the years, they've experienced plenty of wow moments. The question is, who will wow the world on the NFL's biggest stage at Super Bowl 51? Confident and making themselves heard, Falcons fans have arrived in Houston en masse, anticipating a first ever Super Bowl win. New England are the number one team in the AFC. Now they want to be Super Bowl champions once again. So the stage is set here at Super Bowl 51. Will we see history made with Tom Brady claiming his fifth Super Bowl winner's ring? Or will we see Matt Ryan at the Atlanta Falcons claim their very first? Richard Graves, Sky Sports, Houston.